Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. Long-term unemployment in the U.S. is twice as high as it was before the financial crisis. That's according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. Yet Congress did not extend unemployment benefits in the latest budget deal. Less well known is how the U.S. has one of the least generous unemployment insurance systems in the world, both in terms of what it pays and how long it lasts. Now joining us to discuss this is Ross Eisenbray. He's the Vice President of the Economic Policy Institute, as well as a lawyer and former commissioner of the U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Review Commission. Thank you so much for joining us, Ross. It's my pleasure. Ross, what's your response to Congress failing to extend unemployment benefits? Um, you know, the, uh, your organization, the Economic Policy Institute, found that extending those benefits would support 310,000 jobs in 2014. That's right. The, the cost of uh, extending the benefits as they have been over the last year for another year is $25 billion. And putting that $25 billion into the pockets of uh, the unemployed means that they'll have money to spend on groceries and you know gifts for, for the holidays and uh, paying their rent, paying for gas, all the things that people have to pay for. Uh, when Congress cuts that off on December 28, as it it appears that it will, uh, those people will, will, uh, they will have no source of income. 1.3 million people on December 28 will be cut off from the only income source they really have, and that will be disastrous for jobs. It, it means that businesses won't have uh, those people as customers. So can you talk about how the U.S. differs from most developed countries um, regarding unemployment insurance? Sure. We, we have lower benefit levels. That's probably the, the first thing to know, that uh, in many countries, Germany and Japan, for example, uh, benefits are 60 percent for uh, the average worker uh, of the previous wage and 67 percent in Germany if you have children. In Japan, they have a kind of a two-tier system, but for long-term workers, the uh, starting benefit is 80% of the previous wage. Whereas in the United States, the, it generally varies uh, between 25 and 45%. In some states in the South, um, the replacement rates are very low, but on average, it's, it's, more, uh, it's closer to 40, 45%. Uh, so benefit levels as a replacement of your previous income are much higher in uh, most European countries and Japan. Then you have the uh, question of how long will benefits be? Right now, we have a system put in place under uh, President Obama in 2009 that has very long benefit levels by uh, U.S. historical measures. Uh, typically, regular benefits in the U.S. are only 26 weeks, uh, whereas in, in uh, most of the European countries, they're uh, at least 52 weeks. Uh, in Germany, depending on how old you are, benefits last uh, for as long as two years, 104 weeks. Uh, in uh, Denmark, until recently, benefits lasted as long as four years, and now they've been cut back uh, to two years. So uh, in the United States, except in this extraordinary period of, our, of uh, the terrible recession that we had, Benefits are normally 26 weeks, and uh, sometimes, uh, in, in particular states, benefits can be an additional 13 weeks or so. So on, on, on both measures, uh, the U.S. fares much worse than most of the rest of the world. And the, the really sad thing is that most people in the United States who are unemployed don't get benefits at all uh, because the recipiency rates are so low uh, right now. Um, much less than half of all the uh, people who are unemployed are receiving any unemployment benefits. And opponents of unemployment benefits, or at least to uh, the same levels as exist in, in many other countries, would say that they decrease the incentive for people to work, and also it's a drain on the economy. How do you respond to those two criticisms? Well, the second one is, is the easier one to answer because it, it's not a drain on the economy. In fact, it's, it would be a spur to the economy, as I said. And this is not just the Economic Policy Institute, the Congressional Budget Office and 
uh, almost all economists, economists at Goldman Sachs would agree that, that having money uh, in their pockets uh, means that those unemployed people will be able to buy things that they wouldn't otherwise buy. They buy them from businesses, they buy services, they buy products, and if they can't, if they don't have the unemployment insurance, uh, they won't uh, shop in those stores and those stores will not hire as many people and we will have fewer jobs. So that's the answer to, is it a drag on the economy? No, it's just the opposite. It's a, a positive thing for the economy to have those benefits extended. Now, will it make people uh, less likely to work? Yeah, in, in this sense, it makes it less likely that someone who was making, let's say, $60,000 a year will take a minimum wage job. They will keep looking for a job closer to the job uh, that they had, a job that paid $60,000 that took advantage of their, let's say their college education and their experience in an industry, it will make them uh, somewhat less likely to take a minimum wage job. Um, but that's a good thing because there are plenty of people who had minimum wage jobs who are looking for work uh, who would be displaced if that uh, college educated $60,000 a year person took the minimum wage job that they're looking for. So it's not a bad thing that that, that it is. Uh, it makes it easier for people to hold out a little longer for a job that is suitable to their experience, education, and uh, background. Ross Eisenberg, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, it was a pleasure. You can follow us at The Real News on Twitter. Tweet me questions and comments at Jessel Noor. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.